Hey guys, welcome back. So today we'll be looking at what has been happening in terms of regulations in blockchain and also where does quant network stand within all this. So over the past two years, we've seen a number of pretty big events happen in terms of regulations. We know the, the whole Terra Luna breakdown in 2022, the FTX one as well where there's an ongoing court case, or well, the court case, I think, has already concluded. We've also seen Binance recently being charged with criminal charges and just a number of other hacks and things related to do with banks. There's just been a lot of different things going on within the crypto space. And basically, the point here is that regulations are going to be and will be an important thing going forward for the foreseeable future, I think. I think it will be an ongoing thing to watch in this space. And part of the reason why the, these guys here, they some of them may not actually be doing criminal activities, but based on how the regulations are, they are not applicable to, to crypto. And because there's no clear regulations that are set out, some of what these guys have been doing can be considered criminal under those regulations. I'm not saying to ignore those regulations. I'm just saying the regulations, they're based off old cases which are not applicable to blockchain because blockchain is so new. There's new sorts of situations that the regulations can't really account for. So where does Quant Network stand within all this? This is a article posted earlier this year, basically saying that regulations are going to be important and they're just commenting on what has been happening with all the different events that have been going on. Ever since Quant Network started, Gilbert, the CEO here, has been very, he's been a strong proponent of pushing regulations forward. He's a regulator himself. He used to be a regulator. He worked in a number of large financial institutions as a, as a cybersecurity officer. He's also an active member in a lot of the different associations related to regulations. So things like ISO and INAPA and the IETF as well. So this article just says in 2023, there'll be more, there'll be calls for more stringent rules and which will turn into demands. Uh, governments and regulators will realize they can no longer expose consumers to unsupervised exchanges who seemingly had a license to print money and generate steep losses for those who could at least afford it. Uh, so this is, he's just basically going through that regulations are important. And this is super interesting because what he said here has actually played out and it's almost seemed like he was almost predicting the future. But I think that just all goes back to his experience as a regulator. He knows that this is a market that needs to be regulated, basically. So some of the key regulations that have come out, the Markets and Crypto Assets Regulation, MICA. Uh, this is an EU regulation about stable coins. This regulation just looks to put in some safeguards against certain activities relating to stable coins, just making it safer for uh, people to hold and use stable coins. Uh, and that is done by putting in some uh, requirements by the stable coin issuers. I think this one says that you, stable coins cannot be algorithmic. And basically, you need to prove that you have uh, a one to one peg, basically. Uh, another Regulation that has been put forward is in the UK. Rocket boost for UK economy as financial services and markets bill receives royal assent. So that means basically it's been approved. And basically the interesting thing here is that it enables the regulation of crypto assets to support their safe adoption in the UK. Establishes sandboxes. So sandbox is basically, I guess it, it gives room for new projects to experiment that may not comply with the regulations, but it gives them room to do that to figure out what regulations should be in place. So th this is just kind of facilitating the use 
of blockchain, which is really cool to see in the UK. It seems like in the UK, they're a bit further ahead in kind of understanding them that, yeah, we need regulations, but we also don't want to stifle innovation at the same time as well. If we compare this with the US, I think the US is a bit more hesitant when it comes to regulations. See here, US CBDC efforts opposed in legislation advanced by House Republicans. The House Financial Services Committee approved the bill meant to prevent the US central bank digital currency. So I think, you know, I won't go too deep into this, but there's a lot that goes into trying to figure out whether CBDC is actually helping Americans. I think a lot of you, your guys' concerns are basically that a CBDC will be used to control the, the population. And I think there's two sides that argue over this bill, and I think that's one side. And then the other side is uh, we also want to enable innovation. It's not necessarily that we want to control. There, there is a way we can do a CBDC, but still keep the privacy of Americans. So there's two sides to it. I wouldn't immediately think that, yeah, CBDC, we're looking to control the population, but um, it's more nuanced than that. I would say. But I do also understand all the conspiracy theories and once once cash is digitized, that's the end of the world kind of thing. But I, I would take a deeper look into that as well. But overall, I think CBDCs will happen. Pretty much every central bank is looking into it with active projects like live test projects. You see here, Board of the Governors of the Federal Reserve, there's a little, uh, there's a few posts on CBDCs, just a few questions. There's also the Clarity for Payment Stablecoins Act ordered to be reported an amendment in the nature of a substitute of the Clarity of Payment Stablecoins Act sponsored by Chair Patrick McHenry, which would change how stablecoins are regulated. Currently, there's no comprehensive federal regulatory framework specifically designed for stablecoins. CBDCs are happening. Uh, and this thing is asking for a standardized framework that all st CBDs, uh, all stable coins can follow. Um, and that's important because regulations need to be clear to allow new innovations to go forward. So overall, though, I would say the message of this video is that Quant has been involved in regulation since the beginning. I'll go through some different things here to show you that if you're worried about regulations, you should be, but with quant, you're kind of you're kind of covered there, and I'll show you now why. So we see here, quant collaborates with BIS, which is the Bank of International Settlements, which is basically like the central bank of central banks, and the Bank of England on Project Rosalind. So that's pretty crazy startup just collaborating with the Bank of England and the Bank of International Settlements. Project Rosalind. Directed by the BIS Innovation Hub London Centre has been testing how APIs could facilitate retail payments in CBDCs and support the exploration of innovative CBDC use cases. If they're partnered with the Central Bank of Central Banks and the Bank of England, we can be sure that Quant would be kind of informing how regulations take shape because I'm pretty sure the central banks are learning from this project. They're taking all the learnings. They're working with Quant and Quant is kind of facilitating the creation of these regulations in a way. So that's really cool. So moving on, we see here designing secure bridges for asset transfer, Dr. Luke Riley. So this just talks about, there's been a few bridge hacks over the past few years. This just talks about how you can safely transfer assets over bridges. And it's good to see that Quant is creating content about this because it shows that they know what's happening in the market and also they have some solutions which they think works best with the current knowledge they have. But my point with this article here is if you go scroll down, Quant is leading the space in international standard development for asset transfer bridges. We are a key contributor to the internet engineering task force secure asset transfer protocol so the Inge internet engineering task force is the actual task force which uh, created the standards for tcp ip back when the internet actually started 
So if they're working together with IETF, then again, Quant is facilitating the creation of standards and regulations, how assets should be transferred within 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 blockchain, especially within financial the financial market. So if you see here, yeah, the IETF is a standards organization for the internet and is responsible for the technical standard that make up the internet protocol suite. If Quant and IETF is working together, then yeah. Quant bolsters DLT security and interoperability with secure asset transfer protocol. This just goes through it again. Quant is among the part participants of recently approved IETF working group developing a new protocol which will make transfer more secure, more interoperable alongside colleagues from MIT, IBM, Ernst & Young. We have put forward a charter that has led the IETF to, to form the Secure Asset Transfer Protocol Working Group. They're working with MIT, the IBM, Ernst & Young. Some good feedback here from Thomas Sardrono, director at MIT. I'm just driving the point home here that if you're worried about regulations, you should be, but with Quant, you're kind of, Quant has regulatory experience. Quant is also part of the INATBA Association, International Association for Trusted Blockchain Applications. So this is an association formed of very big members here, Fujitsu, Yoti, I know that's an identity, VeChain, the Sandbox, Comgo, which is Trade Finance, Tendermint, which is Cosmo, uh, Cosmos, Settlement, Cytale, R3, there we go, Quant, Morpheus Network, that's the supply chain, we covered that in the previous video. Yeah, and basically Inatba facilitates positive change in the blockchain ecosystem. We're dedicated to supporting and promoting our members as part of our work to bridge public and private entities and to promote global blockchain adoption. So basically I'm just saying this is a big association with some very big partners. And if Quant is in connection with all these partners, if they have all these people in their network, they're kind of, they're, they're in a good position to understand what's the needs of different stakeholders and how that informs regulations going forward. And they probably feed that back into all these projects that they're doing with the central banks. So we see here Quant launches the Overledger platform June of this year. So today we unveiled the Overledger platform, making the same enterprise grade technology that has underpinned our projects with institutional and central bank customers to date, accessible to large enterprises, SMEs and developers for the first time. They're saying here, we built this platform through projects with central banks and now we're opening it to everyone else who needs to use this technology. And if we're built with central bank sort of grade, if the platform is built through those sort of projects, then this is gonna be more than enough for what you need. That's my take on this. Quant has also been granted the patent. Uh, I believe they submitted the patent quite a while ago, but it seems they've actually got it now. Quant granted patent for chronologically ordering blockchain transactions. So this is amazing because it patents the mechanism that how, of how Overledger actually works. Overledger sort of connects different blockchains and it, because all the different blockchains, they have different block times. And what this is saying is basically they have patented their mechanism, which orders all the blocks which come in at different block times into uh, a sequence that makes sense and they've patented that, that mechanism, which is awesome to see. That patent just means that no one else can do it in the same way that they're exactly doing it. So this is amazing to see. It's good to see if you're invested in this and if, you're, if your company has a patent on how they actually deliver their solution, that's it's great to see. Going back to kind of the regulatory commentary here. So UK's Finance Digital Innovation Summit See Gilbert here, he's alongside different senior directors from different banks, Bank of England, Bank for International Settlements, City Bank, Digital Pound Foundation, 
and then Gilbert say quant. Just this, my point here is that he, Gilbert is rubbing shoulders with all these people. We're alongside all these different stakeholders. We're understanding what each one needs to build the Overledger platform, which is very important. And it's good to see. UK joins, sorry, Quant joins UK Finance. So we're proud to announce that we've joined the UK's preeminent financial services association and we'll be speaking at UK Finance's Digital Innovation Summit later this month. UK Finance is the collective voice for the banking and finance industry, representing more than 300 firms. It acts to enhance competitiveness, support customers and facilitate innovation. But yeah, just looking at UK Finance again, this is who they are, who are their people? Let's have a look at their people. We have here a bunch of different people. It doesn't say where they're from, as in what company they work for. Monzo, CEO of Monzo, CEO of Morgan Stanley, International, CEO of TSB Bank, City UK, Danks Bank, Nationwide Building Society, Virgin Money, MasterCard, Independent Age, Leeds Building Society, Capital One, Barclays Bank, UBS, Lloyds Banking Group, Stripe, City, HSBC, Vice Chair, BNP, Paribas UK. So yeah, so you know, my point here is that quant and regulations, we are on good terms. We are on a safe ground, solid ground. So yeah, if you're invested in quant, hopefully this gives you a better idea of where we are in terms of regulations. Given all that's happened, you may be wondering what's going on. And just know that we're working alongside regulators. Gilbert used to be a regulator himself. We're working with central banks and we're facilitating the development of regulations in the UK where we've made, we've made the Overledger platform live based on central bank projects, making that sort of all the knowledge from those projects available for different users. And we've also patented the actual mechanism of Overledger. So yeah, um, that's it guys. That's my update for Quant in terms of regulations. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Bye.